been confused? And then the rest of you have an issue with lying, I guess. So, <laughs> so we could talk about confusion and lying in the same message. Is that right? So this is your fault. We're going to go long because you lied. Huh? Four people said they had issues with confusion. And the rest of you, come on. It's like you always have all the right answers. Is that right? So you're never confused. I want to talk a little bit about confusion. Because honestly, it's important that you understand that you don't have to be confused. But in order to not be confused, you've got to pay attention to God. What He has to offer has to become serious to you. You know, I think I mentioned it before. You know, a lot of it has to do, like, with relationships. You know, a lot of people get in trouble because they get in heat. Well, this table over here, we need to put a focus on this table over here, huh? They do. They get in trouble because they're, because they're in heat. Don't act like that doesn't make sense to you. Have you ever been hot for somebody that's hot? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, this is we're not going to we're not going to go very long tonight. You know, that's one of the very first things that a lot of people get confused about. Hmm? About relationships. And it's real easy to get emotionally involved in a relationship and it not be right. Yeah. And you know, that's, that can be devastating. It can be life-changing. It can, it can change the trajectory of your life. It changed the trajectory of my life, but thank God, I got an opportunity to have a second chance. Not everybody gets an opportunity to have a second chance, but I did. But if you're not wise about how you see yourself personally, then you'll get confused about the need to have someone else specifically. And what I've seen over the years uh, is that if you will be patient about probably the second or third most important thing that you're involved in, which is in a marriage relationship, it will keep you headed in the right direction. But if you allow yourself to see yourself less valuable than you actually are, then you'll become confused into thinking you need the validation or the companionship of someone else in order to make your life fulfilled. And that's just a big lie. It's just a big lie. Obviously, we know that it was God's design that marriage be a big part of his plan. He made the statement himself. He said, it's not good that a man should be alone. And obviously, most of the men we know, we can see it's not good for them to be alone. <laughs> they need help. <laughs> men need help. Now, that's not offensive to you guys, is it? Men, I mean, well, I don't, I don't. I don't need any. I don't need a woman. Okay, well, we're back to the lying message now. <laughs> Let me explain something to you. If God said it's not good for a man to be alone, then it's not good for a man to be alone. Huh? Because he, he'll do stupid stuff. Huh? 
he could become perverted. That's why you don't want to be confused about how this works. Because it isn't good for man to be alone. But he needs to be with the woman that God wants him to be with. That's the main thing. It's easy to get confused when you find yourself looking for someone before you need to look for someone. I get a kick out of the younger kids, you know, like the younger kids, the, the middle school kids. <laughs> the middle, it's so funny, you know. I mean, they, I, they just fall in love so easy, I guess, you know. <laughs> they don't even have a freaking bicycle, <laughs> you know. And, and all of a sudden, they love each other. They love us. What? What do you mean you, we do? We just love each other. We've, you know, we want to be, toge- we want to be together. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do if you're together? You're 12. Huh? What are you going to do? You're going to, you're going to become confused. And you're going to screw up your life and not even know you did it. I just take a deep breath. There are all these beautiful girls in this room. And then all these guys in this room. What a bunch of great potential we have in this room. But some of them need a couple of more years. But the guys always need a couple of more years too. Because if you go into a marriage confused, that's the same way you'll go out. You'll go out confused. And you'll be damaged, and he or she will be damaged, and that's never been God's plan. The definition of confusion is instability or unstable, a state of disorder. To be restless, to be uncertain, to be indecisive, and really one of the worst one of the worst definitions of confusion is doubt. In God's plan, success won't work where there's doubt. Doubt is a killer. Jesus went to his own hometown one time, and and the Bible says that he couldn't do, he couldn't do anything major in that town because of their unbelief or their doubt. You want to minimize anything you're involved in where you take doubt with you, where there's any concern, or where there's any issue if you're doing the right thing or not. I'm persuaded, the years I've been around, I'm persuaded that if a young man and a young woman take the Word of God seriously, they will walk right into a great relationship and never, never have the issues that most, most young men and women have because they're both there for the same reason. The only way a marriage will be the way God wants it to be is when the two are focused on the same thing. And that means they both got to be focused on God. I mean, really, 
not just because she's amazing, not just because he's got a good job, but because they're both focused on the Father. They're God lovers. I'm telling you, I would never, I would never encourage anyone to get connected with someone that wasn't as serious as they are about the things of God. And I would encourage them to give them enough time. To give them enough time to be sure that they really are who they say they are. Because what you do as men or women is more valuable than the opportunity you take to be put in a position of compromise. The relationship with God is too big. He loves you too much. He's able to put a relationship together that you could never put together on your own. But if you get in heat, you're probably going to end up missing the plan of God. Doesn't mean that you may not have a decent marriage. It doesn't mean that. But what is decent in light of what he wants? What is less, what is less and would still be good enough in light of what God had to offer? I'm just saying, you don't have to be confused when you step in to a marriage relationship a business relationship, an assignment that you believe God's given you, if there's any confusion, you need to chill. You just need to wait. In 1 Corinthians 14, 33, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. This is a principle. All of God's promises are yes and amen. There are no what ifs and buts. Everything God has designed for us, He can put it together for us if we allow Him to be the one that we focus on, including relationships. Every step you take, As I mentioned, businesses, you know, some of you, and I talked about it tonight a little bit. Some of you, you you may have uh, businesses, you may have things in your heart that you believe God wants you to do. Then I can assure you, if he's put them there, you can walk into those. But you don't jump out and do anything unless you know. That's exactly the way it's supposed to be. And most definitely, that's the way you handle a relationship. So what does it say? God is not the author of confusion. If there's any confusion, then you just need to chill. You just need to chill. If there are any reservations, if it is a, 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 a relationship thing, if there are any revelation or any reservations with either one of the parties, you just have to chill. Honestly, God wants you to keep, he wants you to keep your feelings out of it absolutely as much as possible. And he wants you to look at things as he looks at things. Because when you begin to look at things as he looks at things, then you'll be on the same page with him. And he'll be able to lead you and guide you directly. God is always a God of peace and order. Look in the book of Proverbs. I want to look at several translations of this verse in Proverbs 29, verse 18. The King James says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law or the word of God, happy is he. So we see right here, that first of all, if, you, if you're not looking at the right things, your life's not going to go in the right direction. If your focus is not on what God's Word says in every area, not just relationships, then you're going to end up somewhere where you don't belong. And that's where most people end up. 
You know, a lot of people say, well, if I can just do whatever. Well, then how will you know when you get to whatever? No, you need to know based on the vision that he gives you. So where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that does the word or keeps the word, happy is he or he will be happy. The message says it this way. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. God can actually order your footsteps if you'll let him. The word even says that the the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Now, everybody that's born again is righteous. And so what that verse is talking about is about you walking right. As long as you walk right, he's going to continue to help you and to guide you every footstep. The New Life Version says, where there is no understanding of the word of the Lord, the people do whatever they want to. Huh, that sounds like most people, huh? But happy is he who keeps the law or keeps the word. What do we see in all of these? We see that in order for your life to be the way God wants it to be, he has to, he has to be given the opportunity to direct you. He has to have that opportunity to direct you. And when you be, begin to give him that opportunity, then he'll begin to lead and guide you into the truth and into the place that he wants you to be. But you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see that because he, he will, first of all, make it clear to you. So again, New Life Version, where there's no understanding of the Word, where you don't give a rip about the Word, or you're just playing, and you do whatever you want to. How many of you ever seen somebody do whatever they want to? How many of you have done whatever you want to? Now, we're getting, we're getting better now. We, we, may, we may not have to do our line message. We've all been there. Done. Has anybody ever done whatever they wanted to and it didn't work? Yeah. Have you ever done whatever you wanted to a couple of times <laughs> and it didn't work? Have you ever done it several times? <laughs> you are bad people. <laughs> You know, I need to go to my bad people message. I think I'm going to go to my you need to repent message. Isn't that what most of us do? We just do what we, you know, we, I feel like this is a thing to do. I believe this is what I need to do. I'm going to try this. You know, with God, you really don't have to try. He'll make it clear so you can just do it and it be successful. The Amplified Classic says it this way, where there is no vision, I really like this one better than any of them. Vision is about not having a redemptive revelation of God. See, in order to really have faith in God, you've got to believe that God is. You've got to believe that this unseen God is able to direct you into the perfect life for you. Not almost perfect, the perfect life. The perfect life. He has a perfect life for each and every one of us. Now, that doesn't mean that some of us haven't gotten off the path. But the path has never changed from his perspective. And the perfect place for you is where he's able to bring you to. Not what you think or see is perfect. But when he brings you, you allow him to bring you to the place that he has for you. It'll be the perfect place for you. It might not be the place you thought of. And I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt anybody or, you know, play with anybody's emotions. It may not be the individual that you're thinking about. But he knows the right one. And the one you're eyeing right now may be the right one. But be sure that God knows precisely 
what's right for you so that there's no confusion. That when you step into that relationship or that business or that whatever, you have no reservations about it whatsoever. You're not the least bit confused. That's the way God wants your life to be. He doesn't want you to spend your life wondering if what you've decided was right. Because if you start wondering about it, it's going to be hard for it to be enjoyable. Where there's no redemptive revelation of God, it all comes back to that. It all comes back to you actually knowing God, believing that He is God, and believing that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. You know, just like you all are doing tonight. You know, I mean, this is, this is amazing that you're taking the time, that you're setting aside the time. And then, of course, those of you that are interns and have been here and a part of the church, some of you employed here, that's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. And honestly, tonight, you couldn't be doing anything more valuable than what you're doing right now. Huh? I couldn't be doing anything more valuable than what I'm doing right now. You have to come to, I had to come to the point where I realized that being in God's plan is the only place that I can have peace, that I can be productive, and that I can be personally fulfilled. It's the only place it'll happen. But so many people never find that. Because they're in a hurry. They're in a rush. They want to make something happen. They want to do like all of us have done a time or two or seven or 15. We just tried it on our own. We did it ourselves. Well, it never works. And it never will. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve two masters. The Bible says you'll either love the one and hate the other one. Or you'll hide from one and pretend with the other one. It has to do with substance or individuals or anything else. You can only have one master. Jesus said it this way. If you love me, you'll do what I say. Which means he has to be, he has to be trusted enough to let him make decisions clear for you. If not, there'll be confusion. So first of all, you have to know him. You have to know him. How many of you in here know him? I mean, have I got you wondering right now? Well, I think I know him, but you know, I'm not sure I know him that well. Well, you can always know him better. You can always know him better. And you can always know him quicker based on how bad you want to know him. And the more you want to know him, the more you'll get to know him. Because God wants each and every one of us to know him well enough that we don't need me or you don't need somebody else because you've got him. Because when you've got him, what would you think you'd have a good word right there would fit in there? If you've got him, you've got everything. Yeah. Everything. Deuteronomy uh, 2020. I've got another lesson, but I think I'm going to save it for the next time. <laughs> and this really wasn't what I wanted to talk about tonight. I mean, I did want to talk about confusion, but I'm not sure I wanted to talk about it uh, in the light that we've talked about it. But maybe that's exactly what God wanted us to talk about. Let me find this. You'll find it before I did. I'm really not moving that, that quick.
I'm sure everybody knows, or probably most of you know, Deuteronomy 30, 20 is where I'm going, not 20. Everybody knows or should know Deuteronomy 30, 19 Man, I tell you what's a good thing I don't have to do this in a hurry on this thing. Shame <laughs> many Christmas. Thirty nineteen. Deuteronomy thirty nineteen. Amen. This verse is why we're here tonight. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this verse. We would not be here. This church would not be here. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Moses was talking to the people of Israel. And he said, I call heaven and earth to record or to witness this day against you. And obviously he's speaking by the Spirit of God. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. I talked about this a little bit today on the simple truth. The thing that's huge about this is that when you, as young men and women, as singles or when you marry... When you work this correctly, you will take the curse away from your family. You'll walk in peace, wellness, and prosperity. Because when you choose life, then it will also affect your seed. And they will choose life also. Most of us weren't blessed enough to have that opportunity. Most of us, we were in families that went from one tragedy to another tragedy, to another divorce, to another illness, to another early death, to another whatever. But we see right here in this verse that life and death, blessing and cursing, is set before everybody. But only as believers do we have an opportunity to take advantage of that. Because we know what he said we should do. He won't do it for us. But he said, my desire is that you choose life. So that both you and your seed may live. And then in verse 20, that you may love the Lord your God can't get around it. You've got to figure out some way to love this unseen God. And the best way to start is to love His Word. Because He and His Word are one. And when you love Him, the Bible says, you'll love His Word. The Bible says that this is the love of God that we do His commandments or that we do His Word. Again, He said that you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice. Obey, think of that, that you may obey his voice. You know, you have to live totally different, differently when you start serving God. You do. You you actually have to obey somebody. You actually have to do what you're supposed to do. No wonder our lives are jacked up. We don't ever make a decision to honor somebody. And it'll never work if you don't honor God. So don't think that you can play with this and everything just work out okay. It's not going to. Forget it. Forget it. We don't want it to work out based on how we feel about it. 
We want it to work out based on what he feels about it and what he wants for us. That you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cleave or hang on to him. And I like this next statement. For he is your life and the length of your days. He is your life. He is your life. He is your life. Actually, those of you in here that are born again, that are believers, you don't even belong to you anymore. The Word of God says you're not your own. But we don't ever, we, we don't ever live like that. You've got, to give, you've got to give you up if you want what He has for you. He said, you're not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. In other words, you're a bunch of dead folk. You have given your life to him, and he has given his life to you. Now, does that make you a nobody? (laughs) Not hardly. That makes you really special. That makes you somebody. That makes you an heir of God. That makes you someone that he wants to take care of. But you got to let him. You got to let him. You got to let him. You got to let him take care of you. Well, pastor, what does that mean? That means you pay more attention to him than you. You pay more attention to him than your feelings. Pay more attention to him. I mean, do we think we can trust him? You think he's worthy of our trust? You got to do this by faith. So, I mean, you know, you may never get a feeling. You you may never ever, you may not feel it. You know how people say, you know, I just, I'm not, just, I'm not, I'm just not feeling it, you know. Well, when it comes to the things of God, you may never feel it. But the Word of God's not going to change. What he says is settled. So in order to be successful, we've got to learn to love him. Just do what he says. Trust him to do the right thing. I mean, I'm glad he was willing to die for us, aren't you? I mean, if we've embraced that, I'm glad he was willing to do that. I mean, that's supposedly, according to the Word of God, put me in a position where my last breath will be my best breath. I'll step out of this life right into His presence. I'm trusting Him that that'll be the case. Well, if I can trust Him with my forever, I ought to, I ought to be able to trust Him with my temporary. I ought to be able to do that. I ought to want to do that. And let me just tell you what it's done for me the last 43 years. It's made my life easier. Now, people have tried to make it difficult, but it's made my life easier. Because when you trust Him and not them, when you put all your eggs in His basket, instead of spreading your eggs all over, then life gets easier. And Jesus said it would. He said, I want you to come to me. Those of you that are jacking around trying to do life on your own, trying to fix all your issues, He said, for my assignment's easy. What I've got for you is light. In other words, it's going to be, it's going to be achievable. And you're not going to have to be heavy, burdened with a bunch of nonsense and drama. God wants us to live drama free. He wants us to live in perfect peace. And we can do that when we love Him, when we trust Him. I've been doing it for a while now. Yeah, I've got a wonderful wife, but you know she's got issues. (laughs) She's got a wonderful husband, but you know he's got issues. But just because you got some issues doesn't mean you can't have a wonderful 
life, and future. Because we both do the same thing very well, and that's love Him and trust Him. And when you love Him and trust Him, that makes everybody around you easier to deal with. And that's why He wants us to love Him most. That's why He wants us to trust Him most. And if we do really trust Him most, then we'll follow Him. If we don't, we'll do the same things we've all done before. We've tried it on our own. I think we'll try this. I think we'll do this. And it happens every time. It's never right. The only, the only one we can count on hitting the bullseye is the Father. You don't want to miss the mark. We've already missed the mark, all of us, more than we needed to. But we don't have to miss the mark again. We can stay focused. What does the book, book of Hebrews say? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He saw us when he went to the cross. And that was the joy that put him on the cross, was being able to give us an opportunity to trust in the Father like he did, because he showed us what that looked like. Hallelujah. Don't be confused about anything. Don't make a decision without knowing that God is behind the decision. Don't ever rush into anything just because of how you feel. You want to do what you do because you know. And He's the only one that that can make you know that you know that you know. Even if you may be stirring in here, he'll be solid. And you'll know exactly whether it's a go or a no. And believe me, if it's a no, then say no. Because there's a go around the corner.